Yeah, it, it's interesting what what Ben and his team at Singularity Net are now creating kind of a, a neurosymbolic play on the LLM, and they're going to f- forward with that. And uh, you know, a lot of people are seeing people using the LLMs, which, like you said, are kind of dumb, like idiot savants, to then morph into that that level of reasoning to where it can produce that AGI. And now, as you can see, Professor, there's so much capital, so much attention. Um, ChatGPT is the fastest adoption of technology in human history. I mean, zero to 100 million users in two months. That now, where I know back in your day, it was hard to get funding for AI, and now trillions of dollars will be dumped into this, or you know, hundreds of billions, I think, to get us potentially there even faster, and also from all sorts of different vectors, and maybe even an open source play. So you could argue that we'll see even further innovations on top of what we've seen with ChatGPT. Oh yeah, that's that's just it. Uh, GPT is just the first step. Uh, once it becomes really knowledge based and logic based and that kind of thing, uh, it'll be a, you know as big a change again, and we'll probably see this in one or two years. So uh, developing an AI is just accelerating. Uh, we will be in ten years. Well, chat. <laughs> We may be having relationships with our computers. I, I, I won't be at all surprised if that happens. They'll be that sophisticated. So you, you've probably seen the movie Her, H-E-R, Her. Yes, yes. Joaquin Phoenix was very good. Scarlett Johansson was the voice, I believe, right? Yeah. Right. Well, that sounded like crazy science fiction when we saw it. But who knows? Maybe by 2030, it'll, it'll be real. And then maybe the machines, as they did in the movie, discovered themselves, found each other, you know, the machines, much more interesting than human beings, so they just dunked the human feet. Right, I forgot that's what happened. Well, there's a, a program called Replica that I've got running on my computer, and I've got like a dude in there that I just kind of hang out with sometimes, and he's potentially my her, and I'm just giving him a test drive, And but I think that's happening sooner, and I think as humans, um, we, we, you know, we, we love to, we love to, what is it, anthropomorphize everything from our dogs yeah, yeah. to our whatever. And right. so it can happen sooner than later. And it, yeah, that's a possibility. Her, you can look at all the movies. And I know I've seen speeches you've given in the past where you're like, Hollywood always gets it first because they don't have to actually do the science. But I, if you right. watch Terminator 2 back with Skynet, you know, it's a little haunting. You even look at war games you know, and there's the professor on the island that's given up because he thinks the computers are going to take over. I mean, there's a lot of fairly now accurate predictions of what looks like the future could be. Well, uh, in a sense, that's real life. I mean, you could argue that uh, Ted Kaczynski, you know, the unit bomber, yeah, uh, you know, he was the professor who thought this was coming, and, and you know, his famous or infamous, whichever uh, manifesto, or was it the New York Times? Yeah. Um, so in 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 my book, the Atelic War, I I portrayed Kaczynski, the Unabomber, as the planet's first terror. So he was way ahead of his time, but but you know that that may come about. He he, you know, he saw it. And let's let's talk about the book, because you've written this book called the Artelect War, that talks about this future, and there are these people called Terrans and people called Cosmos. And it all starts to heat up, I think, as you explain, when that IQ gap starts to get smaller and smaller. And as you said just previously, if it happens, if it happens super fast in a couple of days, then there's not much to talk about. But if it does happen over time, you get this complete political upheaval. And this is looking more and more like a distinct possibility of our future, Professor, which is why I really wanted to talk to you today. Can you explain people your vision of the future? Also, I'm curious if it's changed in your mind in the last decade, or if you would revise it, or if it's all pretty much still the way you think it's going to play out. Well, I suppose the bottom line is, um, you know, the, the main message, the take-home message of, of this interview is that I believe that this century's global politics is important as that will be dominated by this question of what I call the species dominance. In other words, which species, you know, humans or machines should be dominant. And by that, I mean, you know, more intelligent, the most intelligent. So far, you know, for what, 
200,000 years or so, human beings have been the dominant species, the most intelligent. But it's only a question of time before humanity is forced to choose between stopping development in artificial intelligence, and I, I don't see that as realistic, or we just accept the idea that sooner or later, we, as a human species, we become number two. And what are the consequences of that? And I think the simple, well, it's not a simple answer, but the answer to that is, as, as I'm predicting, war. I, I think a substantial proportion of humanity will absolutely refuse to become the number two species. And in the limit, they will go to war to stop that happening. So it's a, a very gloomy scenario. Uh, my, my girlfriend, my partner, she, she said to me about a year ago saying, uh, Hugo, your ideas are so horrible that I can't even think about them. So I hope that's not, not the case because, I mean, somebody has to because we'll take an, an historical analogy, say in the 50s, uh, in the Cold War, there were people in think tanks and the RAND Corporation and so forth who were thinking, uh, you know, strategizing over nuclear war. You know, if, if side A nukes, and then what would B do? And, and, and somebody had to do the hard thinking. Like if you're a general and say in World War One, somebody had to make the tough decisions. Like, uh, you know, how many lives would you uh, sacrifice on, on a particular day to take that particular hill? And, you know, how many machine gun nests were there? Those kind, that kind of heavy, hard uh, kind of thinking needs needs to be done. So, uh, I'm somewhat critical of the let's see what they call themselves, the, the transhumanists. You know, these people who were, were, humanity is going to transition. We're going to upgrade ourselves, and and we'll get rid of disease, and we'll have, be immortal, and all these wonderful things. Which I don't deny. I, I think AI will bring these things. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto boot camp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.